Welcome back to Fair and Friends Friday. I'm Karen Waltuck, the horticulturist for the Beatrix Fair and Garden Association in Hyde Park, New York. Today we're going to be joined by film director Steve Ives and garden educator and former horticulturist of the Beatrix Fair and Garden, Ann Sims. We're joining them for a short, candid conversation about the documentary we produced called Beatrix Farron's American Landscapes. Let's go join them and learn a little bit about what it was like filming the documentary and what they learned along the way. So Steve, tell me why it took us over 20 years to decide to make a film about Beatrix Farron, even though I had longed to do it. Even though you were pestering me about it. Yeah. Almost all, every day. Uh, because uh, I felt like she was this unapproachable, proper, uh, doer woman who was always in, you never saw her without a black choker around her neck. And I was convinced that she was the kind of person that would stay up late at night burning all of her personal correspondence <laughs> in, the, in the fireplace. And I didn't have any idea how to make her come alive on screen. And um, then when we got uh, to the design lecture at Belfield one year, uh, the speaker was Lyndon Miller. And Lyndon's talk was all about how Beatrix had been her heroine. Um, and Lyndon was funny, and she was direct, and she talked about how she engaged Farrand as an, as an inspiration for her own career. And she was clearly, utterly passionate about this person. And I thought, wow, maybe following and unpacking Beatrix through Lyndon is the way to do it. And it provided us with a vehicle so we could have someone take us through the gardens instead of just kind of formally dissecting them. And you knew that she was going to be a star. I, well, I didn't know, but I thought she was going to be good. I had a good, I had a gut feeling that she had a great voice and she had a funny and she had a good personality. But what I didn't know was all the details of her own mm. career, mm. which were so interesting and which in the end, turned out to be this wonderful second thread of the movie right. and, and, and a very emotional one. Um, and so it sort of became a, almost a dual biography. Mm -hmm. You know, when we did the trailer, the guys came up with a, a phrase, two visionaries a century apart, yeah, I love which that. I thought was pretty good. Yeah. Um, doesn't sound in the movie, but it's in the trailer. <laughs> um, but I want to know from, from your perspective, whether you, studied Farron for almost 20 years before we even started making the movie, and whether there was something new or some new insight that you came across while we were making it that you thought was kind of revealing. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I, I knew about her beautiful work and her powerful work in, in gardens that I find transformative for people, but, um, and I also knew about the prestige of her commissions and knew, you know, and, and famous gardens were for prominent people. J.P. Morgan. Rockefellers. The Rockefellers, yeah, all the big names. And so you, you think of her as making these very elaborate gardens um, and expensive gardens. And, and yet I, and I knew that she also had done work for um, the Acadia National Park. And so I, and I knew that she, I mean, she was from Maine originally, right? Exactly. She summered in Maine and yeah. was dedicated and loved the island of Mount Desert Island. But I, I came, when some of the research we came across, early writing that she had done, um, advocating for the importance of public parks in New York City, for example, and right. to create um, green corridors from densely populated places. And I, I think even as a young woman, she saw the power of open space and public places of beauty for, for people's lives and for their, you know, the quality of their lives. And you think about those corridors that she was articulating way back then, and you think in the middle of the coronavirus, mm -hmm. where space is such a luxury, green space in particular, exactly. how visionary that was. Yeah. You know, yeah. she really was ahead of her time that way. Yeah. I think that's great. And, and, it, and, it, it, and it, it made her not seem, it, it, it made her surprising for her station in life and her class too. And that her writing was very compelling and powerful and, and the treatise that she wrote in, in um, defense of the importance of the national parks is was very, I think it, it was an influential piece of writing and, it, and, it, and she really did shape 
um, the current views on the importance of, of public space in general and the national parks in, partic in particular. Yeah. And then the thing that was interesting from a production point of view was, you know, we have to figure out how to do, do justice to two people, obviously Beatrix and her, her landscapes, but also Lyndon, who was a, a novice and had never done it before. And we wanted to make it a series of these conversations, you know, but in the end, what we found, I thought, worked remarkably well. Of course, we got Buddy Squires, who yeah. was one of the great cinematographers in the country. Um, but he had this way of sitting on this little rolling dolly <laughs> on a piece of plywood, and his primary focus was the subject that Lyndon was talking to. Mm -hmm. And we had a second camera that was pretty much locked off on Lyndon. Well, Lyndon knows her subject well. So I know, that's the challenge. And in the end, it turned out that the more the pre people knew, the better the interview was. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why her interview with Patrick Chasse was so wonderful. But what you never really see is the mass of people and <laughs> equipment around something, in their case, at the New York Botanical Garden right. uh, with the, the Rose Garden that she designed right in the background. So you never see, you know, that, the mechanics of it. And dealing with the lighting and trying to, you know, use... Uh, well, this was great for you because yeah, you'd, never I seen, a lot. you'd never seen what it was like to try and put one of these things was. together. So and I, then the airplanes going over in Dunbar right. Noakes and we had to stop mid-sentence and most of the profound things that were being said had That's to right. stop and you, start. You, you, get, you, get, uh, you get about 90 seconds of silence between planes at Dunbar Noakes. So. <laughs> um, so, but I want to know why you think Farron's gardens are important and why, put this down so we don't get quite so dark, why, um, why they've endured, because they, they really have. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, set out to work on restoring this garden at Belfield and I knew it was a beautiful space and it meant so much to me and to, to the people that, that cared and all such a large group of people devoted to the project but when we started doing workshops with young people and bringing teenagers in all of a sudden I started to realize if young people get this a garden that was created a hundred years ago and love it and felt safe and relaxed and their blood pressure dropped and I thought wow this is important stuff you know this is these gardens are relevant today they're not just a historic artifact that tells us what it once was like. It's, it's alive and has so much to give um, to the quality of our lives. And I love that it's a public place now. It was designed as a private garden, but it's a public place. And I think so many of our gardens that have endured are now open to the public and that it, I think she would love that. I remember you would come back from those workshops with the green teens, for example, mm -hmm. and just be amazed at the way in which Farron spoke to them mm -hmm. from a hundred years earlier, this privileged woman from the Gilded Age. Mm -hmm. And yet somehow she had her story as being a pioneer, someone who had to break down barriers. Right. And also someone who just really was an artist, really resonated with them. Yeah. And I think that that's been a revealing moment for me too, to understand how remarkable she really was. Yeah, so. yeah. And beauty matters. Beauty matters, indeed. <laughs> okay, thanks, Anne. Thanks, Steve. Thanks a lot for watching, and we hope you learned a little bit about the documentary Beatrix Farron's American Landscapes. Be sure to check it out. It's now streaming on pbs.org. We'll see you next week for another video.